One thing about living in Santa Carla I never could stomach. All the damn vampires. So today I'm doing a review. The review is the tournament from 2009. There it is, the tournament. Nice bit of box art there. All the main characters facing off. There's a couple of action scenes. Look at the back there. And the disc in the middle. 18. No shit. This is part of what I consider to be my hidden gem. This movie didn't make it to the pictures. It came straight out on the DVD. Every seven years, 30 assassins gather in a city in a sort of an undisclosed location. It's all like last minute. Billionaire gamblers, they're all gamble on it. Each one gets their own odds, like 12 to 1, 10 to 1. The winner, the last man standing, he gets 10 million pounds or 10 million dollars. At this very moment, 30 of the world's greatest assassins are preparing for the ultimate sporting event. International killers of every imaginable discipline will compete for a 10 million dollar cash prize and the honorable title of the world's best. Other movies like this are maybe it's the Hunger Games, all of them sort of gathering together. Competing to be the last man standing. Maybe it's the running man, Arnold Schwarzenegger. A little bit like the running man. This movie stars Robert Carlyle, Kelly Who, Ian Summerhalder, and Ving Rhames. Robert Carlyle, he'll play as like a, a drunken priest, Father McAvoy. Sort of a wimpy, squeamish little church goer, I guess. Kelly Hu, she plays Lulu Zhang. She's one of the assassins. She's from China. Ian Summerhalder from Texas is Miles Slade. Ving Rhames. Ving Rhames is the champion. He's the one who won it last year. The last year's was in Brazil. This year, it's in Great Britain. It's in Middlesbrough. He plays Joshua. He was meant to be retired, but he comes out of retirement. Because somebody kills his pregnant wife. One of the other assassins kills his pregnant wife. This is his way. The only way he's going to be able to find this assassin. Track him down. And that's all he's really there for. Just revenge. So as you can see on the box there. The four main characters. But there is another guy in this. He plays Anton Bogart in the movie. I think he's from France. And some of the stunts this guy does. It's absolutely unbelievable. Jumping from building to building off trucks this guy is absolutely outstanding in this movie I'm not really saying his acting's outstanding but the stunts he does some of the things it's like you know i think my father <laughs> my knees would snap off so they've all been sort of fitted with tracking devices and they have 24 hours to kill each other and they all know each other, they've all got this hand held and they can see where each other's are so they can all hunt each other down, kill each other so that this thing doesn't last like too long. 24 hours they've all got otherwise this can go off and just blow them to bits. So they have to kill each other within 24 hours or they'll all be dead anyway. Notable scenes in this movie. Just basically every death scene. It starts off with Lele Azan. She's in a hotel room. And the guy from Britain, England, he comes in trying to kill her. She just slices his fingers off. And it's, it's not CGI, it's actually real blood, real guts, real gore. Blood splattering everywhere. <laughs> the church scene. Scott Atkins comes somersaulting in. Him and Lily Azan have an epic fight. Scott Atkins' character is called Yuri Petrov. He's from Russia. They have this epic fight in the church. You've got Robert Carlyle, the father. He's like sort of backing off, standing squeamish as usual. <laughs> and on Bogart, another notable scene. He's lying on the floor. And you think he's going to get ran over by the police car that Lele Zan's driving. But he just sticks his feet up and starts getting pushed. Jumps off and just starts jumping across these buildings again. Honestly, he's absolutely amazing. I think he must be some kind of stunt coordinator as well. 
in the background of the movie. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Another notable scene, just Miles Slade, whenever he's on, he plays a character that is absolutely just, just crazy, cuts off people's fingers, he's exploding it. The guy he plays is just completely insane, loves death, loves killing, kills a poor dog, absolutely brilliant. Miles Slade obviously is eating Subhalder, goes around his big white coat, big shotgun, absolutely batshit crazy that guy is. Yeah. That guy is fucked up. The strip club. Excellent scene. There's nine of them all in there, and this thing just ends up being a complete and total bloodbath. <laughs> Another notable scene is when they're in a petrol station, and I'll not say which assassin it is, but the detonator goes off. <laughs> the amount of blood that just splatters all over the clerk and all over everybody, all over the whole room. It's an absolute excellent scene. And probably the main notable scene, the big budget scene probably of the movie, is when the bus is chasing, like a tank of the tank of chasing the bus, big lorry, big bus, they're all shooting, you've got the French guy jumping on top of the bus and everything, truly brilliant scene, big explosions, probably one of the best scenes in the movie. So positives of this movie, the actors. You've got Robert Carlyle, you'll know him from things like Train Spot and Angela's Ashes. Kelly Hugh, don't know much about Kelly Hugh to be fair. Not quite sure what other movie she's in. Ian Summerholder, you'll know him from Vampire Diaries. Also V Wars, which is what I'm watching on Netflix at the minute. Ving Rames, know him from the Mission Impossibles, Conair, Pulp Fiction. You've also got Scott Atkins. And then you've also got that Anton Bogart, who is Sebastian Fukan, Fukan, something like that. You'll know him if you've ever seen James Bond Casino Royale, where they're jumping around, like on the building side at the start. That was him. Absolutely brilliant. I was saying this movie is full of action, full of blood, full of guts, full of gore. This movie is fast paced. You'll never get bored watching it. And another thing I also like about this movie is if you see some action movies, like when they're fighting, they're like this, they're like right up, and all you see is like all these arms and stuff coming in. When explosions happen, it, it's too close up, but in this, it's, it's a bit more backed off. You can actually see the fight scenes, you can see the blood, you can see the guts, you can see them getting shot, you can see everything well. It's not whoosh, all this arms, fisting coming in front where you'd, it's like, what the hell's going on? Which seems to be in a lot of action movies at the minute. But in this, it's far back. The movie angles are great on all of the action sequences. So that moves us on to the negatives. There's no real character development in this movie. You don't sort of feel for any one character. You, I mean, I wasn't bothered sort of who won. With, you're not going to get any type of performances such as like a Good Will Hutton, Forrest Gump. You don't really care about the characters as much as you would care about the characters in those types of movies. It's basically, it's assassins, it's all action, it's all fast paced. If you like to watch, see if you're watching an action scene such as Rambo, 
where everything's just blown up, blood, guts, gore everywhere. That's the type of movie this is. Don't expect to fall in love with one of the characters in this movie. This movie is all about action. Another negative for me, Robert Carlyle. I'm not saying he does a bad performance in the role that he's meant to be playing. But he's in all these scenes and for me I was just, I was wanting him to beg me out. Just kind of a train spotting moment where he was just going to lose, like completely lose his nut and just, maybe he's getting on the action a little bit. But he never does. He seems to just back off and be this whimpering priest throughout the whole movie. You never get that moment of Robert Carlyle just getting some confidence and maybe he's attacking one of the assassins, just any assassin. Doesn't he didn't even have to be one of the main assassins. He could have just attacked anyone. But he is obviously playing a priest, which he's got to be the good guy, I guess, but he's this whimpering. And that was the only character kind of let down for me was Robert Carlyle. I'm not, obviously, like I said, he didn't play the part badly. That was the part he was playing. But you just wanted him to sort of beg me out at some point. Another negative, Scott Atkins. I would have liked to have seen a lot more of him in this movie. Like I say, he must have owed someone a favour, flew in. I don't know if he was maybe a stunt coordinator in the movie and just he was in it because of that. But I would have liked to have seen a lot more of Scott Atkins in this movie. Because like I say, he's one of the best martial artists, actors on the planet. He gets this tiny little... Maybe it's a 10 minute scene, gets a little montage at the start of him killing people, then he gets the church scene, and then he's just written out of it from there. I would have liked to have seen a lot more Scott Atkins. He should have been one of the main characters. Another negative that there was 30 assassins, and you get like sort of like a little montage, just like they're just sort of dropping down. I think the maybe could have. Just made it maybe 15 assassins and worked a lot more on the characters of the assassins. But like I say, this movie wasn't about building up a character. It was all just about death and destruction, which, you know, I loved it, to be fair. So this movie for me, I'd give this movie a 7 out of 10. Like I say, you should definitely just go and, just go and watch the movie. If you can find it cheap somewhere, buy it. If it's on Netflix for rent, just rent it. it Probably only be about three quid on there to rent. It's definitely worth a watch. It's definitely worth your time. If you're not into movies such as Rambo, Running Man, The Hunger Games, it might not be for you. But if you're into those types of movie and you like a bit blood, bit guts, bit gore, you want to see someone right at the start of the movie get shot in their head and his brains just splat out everywhere, then this movie will be for you. Give it a watch. I do actually know someone who worked on the movie. He worked on the movie as an assailant producer, Stephen Mason from Lonely Tree Entertainment. You can catch his channel. He has, also has his own YouTube channel. So I'll leave the last comments for someone who knows a lot more about the movie than me. Over to you, Stephen. Well, 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 well. Hello, Mark. It's the first time I've actually spoke about the tournament in 13 fucking years. Like, Jesus. Um, I'll fill in a few gaps. It's probably about time I actually did something about the tournament. Um, I always, like, get there and eh, just never get there to doing something. Hopefully you'll see Red Mist come out very soon. Um, which, again, we use a lot of the strip joint. Um, YouTube's just advised it's a bit violent. <laughs> of course it is. I had a great time. Uh, there's one thing you left out. Yes, it's all set in the northeast of England. Um, there's one scene filmed in Gateshead High Street in 2007. 2007. The rest is filmed in Sofia, Bulgaria, as well as Rusa, which was a four and a half hour drive. For, like when the truck flips and where um, Rachel Grant gets killed. Rachel Grant played Lala in the original promo, and then Kelly, who who is mainly famous for being in Scorpion King. That was her, one of her big great breakout roles, but she's been around for a long time. She's a massive voice actress. It's actually in like stuff like Sleeping Dogs. And actually um, auditioned with Ian Summerhalder while they were filming the tournament for The Vampire Diaries. Because uh, Kelly Hugh pops up in that as well. Um, I don't like the UK box. <laughs> so that's the UK one you just held up there. Um, and that's the original one. Oh, here you go. So that one's got a lot more going on for it, I think. Um, 
Ian Somerhalder was obviously added on the box uh, because he became massively famous in Vampire Diaries. Um, it's a lot better that one, like. You don't see many of them around. Seen squiggled all over and stuff. Um, there's a lot of mini actors. The the thing about the actors, um, so it was like three months, and so it had Vin Rams. So I had Kelly Hu the entire film, and we had then Vin Rams, and then Ian Somerhalder for a block. And then Ian went away and then came back for a week's filming. And then we had Robert Carlyle at the end. So Robert Carlyle and Vin Rames only worked together for one day. Um, <clears throat> so that was all they filmed. Um, but it's all about scheduling. Um, it was a lot. There was a lot of actors involved. A lot of actors <clears throat> um, were changed just depending on uh, scheduling conflicts and stuff like that. We borrowed actors from places and stuff like that as well. Um, Scott Atkins and JJ Perry, who did a lot of the stunt coordination in the film, who is an amazing talent. Um, him and Scott have just done a video on YouTube. Um, they, they talk about the tournament and the fight scene in the tournament. But they uh, worked together on Wolverine, um, the fighting on that, and they've done stuff like the Shepherd. Uh, a lot of the stunt crew, the Alpha stunt crew from Bulgaria, worked on Rambo um, before that, as well as other stuff. Um, there's a lot of film productions happening in Bulgaria. Scott Atkins had just come off the back end of Unit Undisputed, uh, Undisputed Two. Um, he's absolutely ripped. Um, but Scott, I think we had Scott for three and a half weeks. They spent a week uh, training with Kimmy Chan, is the person who stunt doubles uh, Kelly Hu. And then, like, <clears throat> we did a lot of filming on an airport hangar. Um, so basically, we took over this airplane airplane thing that's used in other films like the shepherd um and so basically the runway which is meant to be the year one in the northeast is just literally an airport strip um just going up and down up and down up and down up and down um we drove the double decker buses over from Bul uh, england to bulgaria um I, I didn't um but uh up and down up and down and then the hangars so in one of the hangars was the hotel room and the lad who comes through the window who loses his fingers is craig conway who is basically he's been in like he's the guy in the tent and dog soldiers he's the the creature of the cave in the descent he's the crazy bastard in doomsday he's been on a lot of the the northman productions he's an amazing amazing guy an extreme talent he's fucking absolutely class um but again we had that there then the next uh, the next hangar we had the church and next to the church was the strip joint. And then next to the strip joint was some of the shell for the slaughterhouse. And then we actually filmed in a real slaughterhouse. Which was just grim. <laughs> it was. It was grim. Absolutely grim. Uh, it did come out the pictures briefly. Because uh, I went to Manchester to see it on the big screen. Um, I'm one of the assassins who dies. And also I'm one of the... If you check out one of my videos called the Chris Jericho story. Baboonry. I go into the story a bit about the tournament and you see some exclusive footage in there. I, I'm just sending this over to, for the love of movies. Um, I'm not editing anywhere. Um, as I say, I want to probably revisit this somewhere down the line. And a lot of stuff I've talked about is content footage, you know. Um, now it was a blast. Um, Laconia, a band I've worked with for a long time. Scott Michael Cavigan, who does the music for Lone Tree. Uh, he's in there. The music's in there as well. Um... There's a lot of cool stuff in that. Um, Sebastian Foucon, he's crazy. Um, free run, he's one of the pioneers of free run. Sebastian is. There's a picture of Sebastian down here. There you go. <laughs> just hanging around, of course it is. Um, Sebastian's really funny because he, he not he was just learning English, you know what I mean. But um, all this, he's got no stunt. He's only got a stunt double, um, which you know a typical filmmaking fashion. The stunt guy was white. So that was quite funny, him walking around the set all day. Again, the Alpha stunt team in Bulgaria are amazing. Um, a lot of the uh, the Alpha team are actually in the video and, and small little roles as well. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of stuff Sebastian didn't do in that film, which is surprising. Even jumping off the bridge onto the bus while it was moving. Um, yes, he had a rig and all that, but it's really him. Um, Kelly Hu as well, she was quite physical. So was Vin Rams. Like, there's a scene in the film and... Vin had a stunt guy, and um, there was this massive, like, again, it was a real stunt, a real stunt, it was a real slaughterhouse, and I just remember them. He's going, I'm going to run and jump across that, and I was going, it's like, you know, it's the fair play, I mean, jump, I mean, it was quite high. I mean, and he just liked it and cleared it, and, you know, he's running with suits and that, and I'm just like, there you go. 
made it in the film as well, just a bit before he hits the uh, conveyor belt. Um, again, me being kind of fodder in the film, a lot of the time the guy who plays it is um, John Lynch. Again, go back to the, the baboon Rouge story if you check that out. Because a lot of scenes in that movie, it's J.J. Perry on the floor who did a lot of the stood and coordinator. And then a lot of the time it could be John Lynch or it could be my hands with a gun. And that's always weird to watch it back. But yeah, unfortunately, I would say about the tournament, um, it was heavily piracy. Um, it took a while. I actually got that in LA in 2010, in February. I was over in LA. So I got that there. And then I got that, I would say, 11 months later when it came out in the UK. So it was like 11, whole year, man. It's a whole year. I mean, now it's just, yeah. that would have been a cork. It would be a Netflix exclusive. That's that's what when we made it that legendary. But hopefully that will see a resurgence, um, get mastered up and stuff like that. But I've never been a fan of the poster. The poster's actually over there. I should have filmed the other angle. But yeah. Yeah, so this is Lonely Train Entertainment. Uh, randomly, um, as I say, hope you check out Mark's channel as well. And I'm going to uh, think about what I've got to properly film. So I better get my cameras ready and off. But yeah, thanks for the shout out, Mark. Um, I'll see you soon, no doubt. Uh, I mean, come help me move some shit. <laughs> right, thanks for watching. Goodbye for now. Like an angel on your shoulder, do you? And if you ever get hurt. And you feel that you're going down. This little angel is going to whisper in your ear. He's going to say, Get up, you son of a bitch! Because Mickey loves you.